you don't realize how uh, important water is until you don't have it. A mountain town runs out of water and may not have more for a while. Prosecutors say a security guard's decision to shoot and kill was legally justified. Colorado's best-known election denier makes her case at the Capitol, but is not interested in answering questions. A judge from Colorado hopes that America realizes just what we're witnessing this week. The recognition that there are well-qualified black women to serve in these positions. And we'll tell you about the time that people watching a local news show raised $400,000 to airlift medical supplies into Ukraine. It was you. You did that. Because this is next. Snowpack is essential to our water supply. Snowmelt isn't always enough or always on our schedule. Up in Empire, small towns just past Idaho Springs along I-70, their main water source is a creek that's barely flowing right now. Town storage tanks have run dry. Our Katie Eastman looks at how they got in this situation. Need another bucket. The new routine in Empire Excellent. includes a trip to Shannon Hickman. Nearly all of the 300 people who live here don't have water. I find myself going to the kitchen sink, trying to make some uh, some rice yesterday. I was like, oh, there's no water. So, <laughs> but you know, with the water they provided for us, I was able to make do. You welcome. I just don't want to spill it on you. They've got 6,500 gallons from Idaho Springs down the road. Is it safe to drink this one? It is, yes. But most of the businesses that cater to the Winter Park ski crowd had to close, and travelers have to be prepared to hold it until the next exit. All because the chief of police says Mother Nature is not cooperating. We've had the drought, and then we've had recent below zero temperatures, which then freezes a lot of the water flow further up on the creek and, and uh, warm temperatures recently for the last couple of days helps, but it takes a while for that to melt. Chief John Stein says they did have water in storage tanks, but discovered those were empty. Now a public works team is looking all over for a potential leak. We're asking everyone to check their pipes and check around and see what we can do to conserve and keep what we've got going because we'd still have some water flowing just not enough. Another backup option would normally be a well, but the town is in the process of building a new well this summer because their old one had heavy metals in it. Buckets and bottles will be the backup for now. While the town works to introduce a new water supply, stop a leak. I'll be here until five. And hopes for warm weather. An empire has had low flows from the creek before, but they've been able to dip into those storage tanks. So they've never been in this situation where both the storage tanks are drained with an unknown leak somewhere. Those teams looking for the leak, Kyle, they weren't able to find one today. Katie, you were telling me they're just pulling from this from this little creek, this this mad creek, but they got a bit more water out of it today. Yeah, so that's a little bit of positive news, but it's still not enough to sustain the town. And the thought is that they're going to be looking for another water source that they can get approved and get into the mix. Yeah, and that takes a while to be able to get that approved and to be able to go through their filtration system. The chief of police's best guess is about 10 days before that will happen. Wow. All right. Katie Eastman, thank you. Murder charges have been dropped against a security guard who shot and killed a man at a protest in 2020. Because that guard, Matthew Doloff, was contracted to provide security for a nine news crew at the time, we've brought in a journalist from our sister station in Minnesota to cover today's court hearing. A warning, A.J. Legault's report does contain images of the moments before the shooting that some may find difficult to watch. Matthew Doloff was working as private security for a nine news crew covering opposing political rallies on October 10th, 2020, when he shot and killed Lee Keltner. It happened during a confrontation where Keltner, upset at being filmed while involved in an altercation with a counter-protester, slapped Dolliff across the face when he stepped in front of the Nine News producer. Keltner discharged bear spray, and Dolliff fired his gun. Today in court, People versus Matthew Dola. the prosecution, which has had the case for 17 months, said this. We can't prove this case beyond a reasonable doubt. And Specifically, we would be unable to disprove the affirmative defense of self-defense and defense of others. So I'm asking the court to dismiss this case without prejudice. Keltner's family called the decision a failure of the justice system. They wanted a jury to hear the case. Dropping this case today, as if our family is reliving the murder all over again. We are watching my brother get shot between the eyes yet again by this court. No justice. The Keltner family vowed to file a civil lawsuit against all involved. In Denver, I'm A.J. Legault. 
State Representative Richard Holtorf, Republican from Akron, will not be charged for an incident where he dropped his gun inside the state capitol last week. Legislators are allowed to carry at the capitol. General public cannot. District Attorney Beth McCann's office said today that Holtorf's actions weren't criminal, just irresponsible. Tina Peters, Republican candidate for Secretary of State who's been indicted for tampering with voting systems, came to the Capitol this morning to speak out against an election security bill. Peters would not answer our questions after she spoke. The Mesa County clerk has largely confined her public comments to media outlets that will not challenge her election rigging conspiracy theories. Peters came to the Capitol to speak out about a Democrat-led bill that would block people who are convicted of an election-related offense from serving in office. She's facing a felony indictment right now, accused of turning off security cameras to sneak somebody into her office to copy election hard drives. That would specifically be made un illegal under this new bill. A school once known for its powerhouse music program is not going to have a full-time band teacher next year. Pomona High School says it's going to combine all the band classes and have the choir teacher teach them. Steve Steger explains what happened when a community that prides itself on the music it made sees that point of pride threatened. But I want to be a professional cellist. The next step 14-year-old Jack Ferguson is about to take made perfect sense. He is more on the shy side. And I, but I feel like he, he expresses himself through music. Mom Amy figured her son was making the right move, enrolling at Pomona High School. We were very excited about, you know, getting into the orchestra program, and um, he wanted to get into the chamber orchestra. Until she saw the petition floating around this weekend. It's shocking. The change.org petition calls to stop the cuts coming to Pomona. The school, known for its instrumental music program, is cutting its band teacher next year, citing dropping enrollment. The Friday we were told was an orchestra class, and when we were rehearsing some of her music, we were all crying while we were playing. Erin McGovern is a senior and principal viola player in the school's chamber orchestra. For band and orchestra, and especially in choir, it's our safe place. It's where we go, you know, when we've had a rough day, or it's where we go when we want to have a space to relax. Jeffco Public Schools today called the move an alignment of teachers to fulfill student course requests. Quote, students who signed up for the instrumental and vocal music courses will have the opportunity to take these courses from excellent music teachers who are shared among multiple campuses. So even though I'm not there next year, I want to leave something for the students that are still there. McGovern and a group of other students made the petition. And we weren't expecting to get more than a couple hundred signatures. Jack's mom is one of the nearly six thousand signatures on that petition in just a few days. Hoping her son doesn't have to make a tough choice to leave his friends and transfer somewhere else. The arts community is taking a hit and they always kind of take the hits when it's time to cut programs. Now again, Jeffco Public School says kids are not going to lose out on opportunities here because of this, that the classes will still be offered just by multiple teachers from different campuses. McGovern and the students and teachers protesting this say that they hope that the community will step in here. She says community members have made donations to help make improvements to athletic facilities before. They hope, Kyle, that maybe the community would step up and say, this is important enough to us that we'll step in and mm. help out the school. And actually give money to fund the program. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, you hear them say align to student choices. I hear enrollments, and then are kids still interested in band? It's interesting. The note from the principal to the Pomona community talks about since Stanley Lake High School opened in 1998, they've mm -hmm. steadily seen enrollment go down. And they're continuing to see that now, part of the reason why they're having to make some changes mm -hmm. here, because in lower enrollment means less funding. Sure. Less funding means fewer positions for for availability. But the other thing here is that a lot of people aren't signing up for these classes is what the Jeffco tells us. The students refute that. They say that band classes have gone up in recent years and that a lot of people are signing up for it. Hmm. It's not an inexpensive thing for a kid to get into and stay into over the years. All no. right, Steve, thank you. A Russian billionaire, the guy who owns the steel mill in Pueblo and a mega mansion in the high country could see some of his residential property seized by the U.S. government. Roman Abramovich's most famous property anywhere is the Chelsea Soccer Club, which he says he's selling. He also owns Evraz Steel Company, as in Evraz Steel Plant down in Pueblo. CNBC is now reporting that Abramovich owns two mansions in Snowmass, 
once a 5,500 square foot chalet in Snowmass Village. There we're showing you the steel plant. That doesn't look like a very nice mega mansion, does it? He purchased this mega mansion for just under $12 million back in 2008. It's down the road from a much bigger home in Snowmass, 14,000 square foot mega mansion that sits on 200 acres. Bought that in 2008 for 36.5 mil, reportedly worth more than $50 million in today's market. CNBC says the properties are prime targets for an asset freeze if Abramovich is sanctioned because they were purchased and they remain under his name. Most U.S. real estate owned by Russian billionaires or oligarchs is held through shell companies or LLCs. You put together an absolutely incredible show of support for the people of Ukraine through your latest Word of Thanks microgiving campaign. Raised more than $400,000 since last week to help the Colorado-based nonprofit Project Cure as they continue their airlifts of medical supplies into Ukraine. That's your third largest Word of Thanks campaign ever. You're helping Project Cure save lives in Ukraine. You really are. And thank you for that. So where should we do some good together next? I welcome any and all suggestions, Colorado-based nonprofits that you think are doing exceptional work and could do more with our help. Next at 9news.com is the email address, the easiest way to reach us. I read every message. As Judge Ketanji Brown Jackson makes her case to be on the Supreme Court, a judge from Colorado reflects on the significance of this moment. We're looking into your questions about the state parks pass that we'll all be paying for next year, unless we know to opt out. And one of Colorado's best sources of drama is going away. It's a sad day around here on Nest. Cloudy and gray along the Front Range today with a bit of light snow to decorate the Flatirons in Boulder. This powerful spring storm is spinning over eastern Colorado and will produce a severe weather threat from Texas through the Gulf Coast states tomorrow. We are looking at the potential for blizzard conditions across eastern Colorado, western Nebraska and Kansas as an upper air disturbance comes in on the back side or kind of the heels of this departing system. So the winter weather and travel advisories will remain in effect for areas south and east of Denver through the evening. Snow ending from north to south. Skies gradually clearing. The wind will increase across the central plains tomorrow and we have isolated snow showers with the second passing weather disturbance. And then after Tuesday, the warming trend begins. 50s Wednesday, 60s Thursday, Friday, and then sunshine and 70s for your upcoming weekend. Enjoy. A love triangle. A tragic loss. The Stanley Lake bird cam really had it all and it kept viewers glued to it for years. Sadly, Colorado's favorite avian baby mama drama is no longer going to be televised. The city of Westminster is replacing its popular Stanley Lake Eagle cam with a shot of the park's bird island, which I understand has other birds that are not as interesting. The original Eagle cam was installed in 2016, and it, it focused on the park's main attraction, the bald eagle nest. And then, and then things got wild because there was this female eagle that came in and, and attacked the nest and the couple there. This was in 2020. What ended up happening was the mama eagle got kicked out. Dad eagle shacked up with the new aggressive woman who came to town. They started a family together. And then last May, their nest collapsed. It was, it was terrible. They lost their home and they ended up losing one of the young eagles. The pair then relocated and built a new nest but they're deep back in a wildlife area, so they're out of camera range. We're getting some feedback tonight from viewers wondering how we'll be able to opt out of the new Keep Colorado Wild Parks Pass. So starting next year, you go to register a personal vehicle at the DMV and you're automatically going to get charged an extra $29 for a state's parks pass, whether you want one or not. It's less than half what you would pay for an annual pass if you went to go buy one to get into any of our 43 parks. But unless you opt out, it's going to be automatically charged when you register your vehicle starting next year. A number of next viewers have reached out wondering how this opt-out process will work. The DMV is promising us that this will not be complicated, so we intend to hold them to, to that. They tell us that you'll be able to opt out at the time of your registration or registration renewal and that you will be able to opt out whether you're doing that online or in person. I stand on the shoulders of so many who have come before me. The confirmation hearings of Judge Ketanji Brown Jackson is a landmark moment for America. People aren't used to seeing us in these roles. We witness that history through the eyes of a trailblazing judge from Colorado. Next.
Juneteenth is a step closer to becoming Colorado's newest state holiday. Recognizes the day that slaves were freed in Texas in 1865, years after President Lincoln declared the end of slavery. It became a federal holiday last year, and the move to make it a state holiday got a near unanimous vote in the state Senate today. Only Republican Jerry Sonberg voted no. We didn't hear back from him on why. That bill now heads to the state house. Today, Judge Ketanji Brown Jackson sat in front of a Senate committee to be considered for an appointment to the Supreme Court. First black woman considered for the position. We talked about that history happening before our eyes with the first black woman appointed to Colorado's Court of Appeals, a milestone that happened fairly recently, in 2013. Today, the committee will begin its consideration of the nomination of Judge Ketanji Brown Jackson. I was so excited. Hi, I'm Karen Ashby, and I was a district court judge uh, in Denver Juvenile Court for 15 and a half years. And then I was at the Colorado Court of Appeals for five and a half years before retiring in 2019. It was more after the fact when I was appointed that it, it struck me that much more that, okay, <laughs> I, I am the only one in the state judicial system um, and people are going to be looking um, and people are going to be wondering, um, you know, if I'm up to the task. I had people asking me that. I do. And to finally actually have the recognition that there are well-qualified Black women to serve in these positions. And we now have somebody who is willing to put one of those women forward for a position that she's certainly well-qualified for. For so long, we couldn't be in a position to be nominated to this type of position. And now we kind of hear arguments as to why she shouldn't, um, you know, that somehow she got special treatment. My parents taught me that unlike the many barriers that they had had to face growing up, my path was clearer. People aren't used to seeing us in these roles. And, you know, I had the experience of people not believing I was a judge. I interpret and apply the law to the facts of the case before me. I am just so excited. And I think it also will be an example to so many young black women and children that, yeah, we are good enough and we deserve to be in these positions just like anybody else does. It's a sign of something that's been fixed. So the fun's over. That and your feedback next. It's a sign. It's no longer stuck on stupid. Rain or shine, snow or summer, a thermometer sign in Fort Collins said red 74 degrees. It becomes something of a running joke around town. Uh, when you let us in on the joke, one of the businesses of the complex said that several fixes had failed. Well, I'm sad to report that there's an updated photo and they finally have the thing working. That's unfortunate because watching snowfall on a 74 degree sign was just delightful. How could that not make you smile? Send us the signs you see, right, wrong, or otherwise. Email next at 9news.com or tweet at us using the hashtag HeyNext. Uh, got feedback from, from two people who co-authored the email, apparently. Denise and David said, uh, you support so many Colorado nonprofits, and we're happy to donate to some of them. We think that you should promote the benefits of supporting Colorado's state parks. We're lucky to live in such a beautiful state. I am all for people supporting the state park system, if they choose to do so, uh, this opt-in, opt-out thing, that's a little squirrely. So if you want to support the state parks, then do it. If you don't, then don't. See you next time.